All right, good afternoon, everybody. It is Jay again. So today we are going to be talking about multi-grafted fig trees or fig cocktail trees, or as they're called here in the valley, figzilla trees. So what exactly is a figzilla tree? Well, a figzilla tree is a fig tree that has been grafted with multiple varieties of figs so that you have many different varieties of figs on one tree. That is what a figzilla is. So this particular tree here that I'm showing you has been grafted with over 25 different varieties of fig trees. And you can kind of see all the labels there. And I wanted to do this video a little bit later than when I grafted it, which was in the winter time, because I wanted to make sure that at least several of these were going to wake up and grow, which you can see a lot of these have, and they've actually pushed quite a bit of growth since I have grafted some of these. Now, not all of these have woken up yet, and I don't expect them to. So like I said, I grafted about 25 different varieties onto this particular tree, and if I get half of those to work, I am happy. You know, if I can get 12 or 13 of those to work, and then I will do the same thing next year on this tree to add some more varieties to this tree. Now, I don't do a lot of these uh, fig cocktail trees. These are commissioned projects. This was actually a project that a husband commissioned for me to do for his wife because he wanted to have a fig tree that eventually had 50 different varieties of fig on one tree so i got one of these started for him this year and i usually do a couple of these per year i have done done these in the past as sort of special requests so or, before we go over the the some of the varieties on this tree and talk about what we used as far as the root stock on this tree let's go over a few of the tools that you're going to need if you want to attempt to do this now, I'm just going to be showing you some of the easier methods on how to graft because I'm going to assume that if you're an expert, well, then you already know how to graft and this video isn't going to do you very much good other than show you that you can graft multiple varieties onto one tree. Now, I do want to, I do want to state that I would not do this with all types of trees. Not all types of trees work well in this scenario with the multi-grafts. I know it sounds really cool and a really cool idea, but it doesn't really work on all citrus trees. Some are a little harder than others. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the citrus cocktail trees, which are the multi-grafted citrus trees, and they just aren't that successful for many, many different reasons. For a tree like that but when you've got a tree like this that has smaller fruits like fig trees or mulberries well then the multi-grafted trees definitely definitely works on those so let's go over a few of the tools and then we'll talk a little bit about this tree that looks a little bit like medusa okay so now we are going to go over the tools that are required here and it's good to have yourself a nice workspace or something nice to work in. So for instance, I use this tub here and this tub was just purchased at Lowe's or Home Depot. I can't remember. It's just a cement mixing tub, but it's a really nice little tub in which to keep all your tools together that you're going to be working with in order to graft trees or graft multi-graft fig trees if you're wanting to attempt this project. So you're going to need several, several tools, and you can use exactly what you want to use. Remember that everybody has a different thing that they like to use. These are the things that I like to use, and they work really, really well for me. So th this is sort of my arsenal when it comes to, um, to uh, grafting, grafting and pruning. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some alcohol of some sort, um, 70 percent alcohol will work just fine and this is basically you're using this to sterilize your tools because you don't want to pa pass any pests or diseases on to your other trees so this is for cleaning your tools your cutting shears your pruners your knives etc okay so that's the first thing you're going to need you are going to need a set of pruners of some sort in order to take 
your cuttings and to take your scions, which is the example here in this bag, you're going to need some cuttings off of another tree, whatever fig tree or, or whatever you're grafting, you're gonna need some scions off of that tree. So that's what this whole bag is. These happen to be tiger panache cuttings, which is a delicious, amazing fig. So we're gonna set this over here to the side. And obviously we're not gonna be doing this this time of year. It is early April and it is far past the point of doing this, but this will be preparing you for next year. And that is sort of what this, this video is for. So you're gonna need some, some cuttings of some sort. Um, you are going to need a knife. It's good to have a good, a good grafting knife. I like to use this one here. Uh, which works really well. It's got two different blades on it, and this works really well for grafting cuttings. Um, you're going to need a knife if you are going to do larger cuttings. So that is just a large knife that I have stolen from the wife. You always want to steal their best knife because that's going to work best for grafting your fruit trees as you always have to grab their favorite knife okay then the next thing you're going to need is some rooting hormone of some kind i like to use this product uh horbex rooting powder i believe i probably got this off of amazon and this works really well for my purposes in joining the growth together on fig trees then you're going to need some sort of way to seal the wound. So I like this particular product. This is made by Tanglefoot. This is a tree wound pruning sealer and grafting compound. And I probably got this off of Amazon too. And this is the best product that I found because it doesn't stink. Uh, it does not stink like petroleum like all the other uh, tree sealers do. This goes on nice and it doesn't stink and it goes on brown and dries black so you know when it is fully cured okay so you're going to need some some way to seal up the wounds on your tree then you are going to need some way to secure the scion to the tree because it's not going to just sit there by itself so you're going to have to use zip ties which i often use because they're quick and easy that's a good way to adjoin and hold this scion onto your tree or rubber bands. I sometimes use rubber bands and I wrap them several times around the grafted area and that will hold on the scion to the actual tree. Then you are going to need some way to keep the humidity in the scion. So if this dries out, then you are screwed. It's not going to work. So you need some way to keep moisture in the scion until it actually takes. So there are several products you can use for that. Uh, one is this, this parafilm tape, uh, which I like because it's nice and stretchy and you can wrap it around the scion and the leaf buds will emerge right through the parafilm tape without disturbing them. They'll just break right through it and grow nicely. The disadvantage of this is you gotta get it tight because if you don't, it'll start to unravel on the scion and then the scion will dry out in a day or so and you won't have noticed that and then that means death to the scion. So really the most important part about grafting, the most important part is keeping some humidity or keeping this scion moist and not letting this dry out. If this dries out, that's it. It's no more, no more go. <laughs> okay, so then another thing that you can use, and I often use sometimes, are these little poly bags. And this one is probably, I don't know, maybe a foot long, maybe 12 inches by, I don't know, maybe three inches. And I probably got these off Amazon as well. I've had a lot of this stuff for a long time, so I don't remember, but anyway, this is a good way to keep that nice and moist because you can just slip this over the scion on the tree and then secure this with a rubber band at the base of the tree and that will keep that nice and moist 
and cool inside there and then you'll see the the buds start to emerge underneath the plastic and then you're going to want to slowly start to remove this bag or you're going to cook the little scion inside this bag because now you've created a little greenhouse that's going to superheat out here in the sun inside this bag with no ventilation so you'll have to still slowly start to remove this as you're getting your your growth and then the final tool that i will be using today is going to be this neat little grafting tool and you can pretty much get these anywhere now uh, Amazon is probably a good source for these and what's neat about this tool is if you know nothing at all about grafting and you are just getting started and you don't exactly know how to line up scions and get those correct so that they the cambium layers match up well then this tool almost does everything for you so this tool has a I don't know if you guys can see it but it's got a neat little little blade in here that when you squeeze the handles you see that blade come out and it's shaped like a little horseshoe and so when you cut one side of the scion and then you cut the reverse side of the tree that you're grafting what it does is it puts a little key in there that automatically matches up for you guys so i will show you that here in just a moment but that is probably the slickest tool to use if you've never done this before. Now, if you've done this before, this is not probably going to be efficient or your best way to do this. There are many other different ways to graft, but I'm talking about the beginner as I've seen people do things. Uh, they're not the best with a knife when they get started in matching up cambium layers. Now, as you get better at this, this is going to be a better way for you to go. You're not going to want to use this method anymore. But this is more or less just to kind of get you started, get your feet wet, and get you into the fun of grafting. And then eventually you'll want to get into different types of grafting and grafting larger material. Because it is possible to put a little branch, a little scion, on a big tree, on a big cutting if you want to and it's also okay to put roughly the same size branch as the same size as you're cutting there's a couple different ways to do that but for this video like i said i wanted to keep it somewhat easy so you didn't have to buy a lot of tools or source a lot of materials in order to kind of get started on this and see if this is something that you would like to do because believe me it is really neat and fun and rewarding and when you get these trees to take Man, they're neat because they've got all colors of the rainbow of figs on them at once. You know, yellow, purples, greens, reds. They just look absolutely beautiful. So this is about, I would say, the minimum quantity of tools needed in order to get started on, on kind of grafting. Like I said, you're going to find things that you like that work a little bit better for you. But for me, this is basically the the basic toolkit that I use for most of my grafting. So now let's kind of talk about the tree a little bit here and see if that's something that you guys may want to do for yourselves. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the tree first because you're going to want to know what I started as a basis for the tree. And in other words, what did I use as the source material or the base of the tree so what i like to use when i do a lot of these uh fig cocktail trees is i like to use brown turkey so i like to use improved brown turkey as more or less let's call it the root stock of the tree the brown turkey fig seems to be one of the biggest most aggressive uh fig trees that we have down here in phoenix and actually there's another one right behind this one that I can show you that I'm also growing to do a, a fig cocktail tree on this one. This one is substantially taller. You can see it kind of goes way up there. So this is gonna be a more of a tall kind of shade tree, but the way the brown turkeys grow is they grow in a habit that makes them really kind of nice to graft. So you've got these side branches that come off pretty much all over the tree, which makes them a good qualifier there for grafting different varieties onto this tree. While in this case, 
particular case, keeping a central leader on the tree and then just grafting the side, side grafting the branches on this one. This is more for like a taller, taller, more narrow shaped tree. Whereas this one you can see has been pruned and shaped to be a shorter, more kind of open vessel tree. Now, as this gets growing, I'm going to have to shape all the scions and make sure that they're all kind of pointed out the correct direction I want them to grow so that they will fill in all sides of this tree and I will get fruit all over the entire tree. So several of these have woken up, like I, like I said before, not all of them have, and I don't expect them all to, but it is really kind of neat when you see them start to, start to take. And you can see here uh, where they've been grafted, they've been grafted right at the base of each one of these branches so that I can keep track of which one of these is which. So in this particular case, this one happens to be a white Marseille or the Jefferson fig. And this one really took, this one really took off. And you can kind of see this one's parafilmed. This one's wrapped with parafilmed. It's secured with a zip tie here. And you can see that this one has already gotten well over a foot of growth on it. And it's really also neat to see the different shaped leaves that you're gonna get on one fig tree because they all look a little bit different. For instance, the white Marseille, they always look like this. They've got these big, what looks like fingers, basically. Whereas most of the other fig trees do not have that shape. They've got more of a standard, like a standard three lobe, or they've got a five lobe, which I'm not seeing on here. And they've also got a, that's a, that's a five there. And then they've also sometimes got a single, single leaf as you can see here okay so this thing has pretty much woken up several of the branches uh to kind of go over some of them i obviously I'll leave one at least as a brown turkey then up here we've got a blackjack this one is a yellow this is a yellow crookneck really sweet fig violet de bordeaux Magnolia, we've got Peter's Honey, we've got a Texas Giant Blue, Magnolia, we've got another White Marseille, and on some of these I put doubles to make sure that they would for sure take. We've got a Tiger Panache, we've got a Nixon Peace Fig. We've got another Texas Giant Blue. Up here we've got LSU Purple. We've got a, another Texas Giant Blue. And another Texas, I really like that one. And as you can see, the Tiger Panache has also really, really bit in. That one is an aggressive one also. So this one has some nice growth on it also. The white Marseilles for sure have woken up. We've got Peter's Honey. Now let's move down this side, white Marseilles. We've got a Mission. Mission on this side, which has woken up nicely. Tiger Panache, LSU Purple. Mission, Peter's Honey, Atlas, oh man, I can't even get to all these labels now, Violet de Bordeaux, another Mission, a Nixon Peace Fig, an Aisha Green, This is just really neat. It's kind of hard digging these labels out too. And then several of these have blown off. We've had a lot of winds lately, so I've lost the labels on several of these. Several of these scions are missing their tags, but that's okay because those will be mystery 
mystery figs. All right, so you can see quite a few of these have taken and kind of taken off. And the goal here is to eventually, like I said, end up with about 50 different varieties on this particular fig, but 25 varieties is about a good stopping point. So that's what this one will eventually have once all these have taken and woken up. And you can see almost all of them have. They all have just a little bit of growth there if they've not fully woken up yet. So yeah, this thing is pretty neat. Pretty neat tree. Um, I'm gonna go over some, gra uh, some grafting real quick and show you some splicing with that little tool that I showed you. And then you can get out here and do some of your own. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is a scion. And like I said, it needs to be, uh, well, it doesn't have to be a different variety, but obviously you'd want to do a different variety because you've already got that variety of tree. So this happens to be, like I said, a tiger panache. And the first thing you really want to check to make sure is that the cuttings are still good if they're still viable. Make sure they're still green. So if you just give them a little, little scratch there with your fingernail or a knife, you'll see that they are either green or brown underneath that little scratch. If they're green, they're good to use. If they are brown, you might as well go ahead and toss them away. <clears throat> also, there are different pieces that I like to use for actual grafting. And the tips of the branches are usually my favorite for actual grafting. Now, if I've got bigger cuttings, let me grab one out of here. If I've got a bigger cutting, then I'm going to use these these bigger cuttings I'm going to use for actual actually rooting. So I'm going to root these cuttings, whereas the, you can see that's a lot fatter, a lot fatter cutting. And you can see the tip has been removed. Basically think about this as being the branch here, where you've got the thicker part at the bottom. The lower part of the branch you would use for your cuttings. And then the top of the 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 top you would use for actually grafting. So the part that we are going to be discussing is this part here, because these don't tend to root that well, or at least for me anyway, uh, because they're too green. The roots like to come out of more of like this woody material where you've got a lot of nodes, like on the base of this uh, fig cutting here. So these newer branches, they don't tend to have a lot of that, um, those nodes that are going to actually root from. But what they do have is a lot of growth, growth hormones in them. So what I like to do is use these for grafting trees because they take to the branch almost immediately without any problem. So now you're able to use the whole branch when you cut it off from the tree. Like let's say you're doing some pruning in the winter and you trim your branches, well, now you can use the entire tree because you will be using the lower woody stems like this one for cuttings, and you'll be using these pieces here for your grafting. So nothing goes to waste at all whatsoever, okay? So how does this work? Well, I've only got one hand available here, so it's going to be a little tricky. We're gonna do a little stop and go here. So. The way this works is you put the branch inside this little alleyway right here. It's going to slide right through here. And then as you make that cut, it's going to cut that pattern. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause it real quick and I am going to cut one of these. You basically insert it just like this. And then you'll make that cut, which I'm just going to pause it real quick and I'm going to make that cut. Okay, so I have made that cut. Let's see if you guys can see that little pattern that that has cut in that branch. So I'm going to slowly start to kind of spread it open here for you guys to see what that cut did. So that cut basically made a male and female pattern. I'm hoping you guys can see this here. So you've got the female side there on the bottom, right? And then you got the male side there at the top, right? And we all know how uh, we all know how nature works. 
here, male, male goes into female. As you can see right there, it just clicks right into place. Now, obviously this is gonna match up perfect because this is the same branch that I cut it from. So you can see when this has been put together, you see that that lines up absolutely perfect all the way around, right? But you're gonna be using different branches from the tree. So you have to get real close to the same size cutting as the part that you are grafting together so that when they line up together, they basically end up looking like this, okay? So what is the next step then, as soon as you've cut this? Well, you gotta do this quickly because you don't want this to dry up. If this material dries up here in the center, then it's not going to work because obviously you've dried up that cambium layer. So here's where a little bit of that of the hormone comes into play is I take and I dip this uh, cutting into your rooting hormone and you're not going to put a gob. Okay, you're just going to put just a little bit. So we're going to dip him down in there. Right, and I usually put it on on the male side there. So you've got just a little bit of powder and then that goes together in your, when you join the two pieces. So I'm gonna join these up cause I'm only one hand, working one handed here. Let's get these together, here we go. So now you put that together and you've got just a little bit of that powder in there. You don't want too much because you'll dry up the <laughs> the sand with too much of that, that rooting powder in there or that growth hormone. Okay, so now you've got a little bit of that in there and you've done this nice and quickly so it doesn't dry out. And now you need a way to bind and secure these two together. So this is where the rubber band comes into play or the zip tie comes into play. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Okay, and now you see we have been bound together. So I basically used that zip tie as a brace and I used it to pinch and hold those two pieces together. Now, we're gonna get into the wrapping and keeping the scion nice and moist. So there are several ways to do this and one would be to use the bag and slip the bag over the scion See if I can get it in there. And now that's gonna keep it nice and moist in there while it's rooting. And you just have to remember to keep these out of the direct sun because they will not root. If they're in this bag, they will superheat and they will dry out. So the next way, or the next thing to do with this is you're gonna need to secure the bag. So now is the time where the pruning sealer comes into play and I would take a little dab of this pruning sealer after my after my seal has been made and I'm going to put a little bit of that pruning sealer all around the outside of that cutting and where that zip tie is to make sure everything is secure. You don't want to use you don't want to get it inside the actual cutting because it'll seal that off and it won't connect. So you gotta make sure you've got this nice and sealed up before you start to seal it up with some sort of a pruning sealer. So that would be the next step I would do on this is I would dab some pruning sealer around this wound. I would put the bag over the cutting and then you're going to need some sort of a stick or a branch. Like so, and you are going to put another zip tie around all of this and what that is going to do is that is going to seal the bag closed and it is also going to put a support branch over here on the side so that when a bird inevitably lands on this i can almost guarantee you a bird's going to land on this because you don't want it to if they land on this cutting the chances are they're going to break off that cutting so by having another little support branch attached to the side of it, the bird can land on that branch and you don't care about that because that's not actually attached to the tree like your grafted 
piece is that you don't want to get physically damaged or broken off or even the wind could probably break this off. You need something to secure and sturdy this. Uh, the other way to do this would be the way that I like to do it a little bit better, and that is by using the parafilm, because when you use the parafilm, um, you don't superheat the bag up, so you can just leave the parafilm wrapping. So the parafilm, I'll get a little bit of this out here and I'll start to wrap this for you. This is going to be wrapped around the entire Scion and this is going to keep it nice and moist. This is stretchy. Basically think about it like saran wrap and it's going to keep the entire cutting moist. So I'm going to wrap a little bit of this cutting and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, so hopefully this shows what I have done here. So this parafilm you can see is basically like saran wrap, like I said, and you are going to start at the very tip. Make sure you get that entire tip enclosed. Do not let that dry up because that's what's gonna die first. So you gotta make sure that that's wrap, wrapped. And you're gonna take this parafilm and you're going to wrap it. You see how it's stretchy? You wrap it nice and tight around the entire scion and you pull it tight around the buds. So this stuff sort of conforms to the shape of whatever you're doing. And you can see here that it sort of wraps itself nice and tight around the buds. Now, you don't want to do more than two layers of this because then you're going to get it too thick and it's not going to emerge through. But if you've got one nice tight layer on this, then that'll be good enough and you won't have to use the bag approach and you won't have to worry about these cooking actually out into the in the sunlight because it's so hot here when these start to wake up. So you need something to keep this nice and moist. So I can't tell you, I cannot say enough that if you do not keep the scions moist and humid, then the whole thing will dry up and this will not work at all whatsoever for you. That is the biggest thing to remember. And you gotta remember that here in, in Arizona or in the desert, it's dry, it's dry even in the middle of the winter. So you now need to provide some support system in order for those scions to take. And you definitely don't wanna do these out in the full sun. You need a shadier area in which to do these. So to kind of recap, these are some of the tools that you will need. This is your basic kit. This works really well for me. And as far as the tree goes, To kind of reiterate on the tree, you're going to need a little bit of an older tree helps. This is a five-year-old brown turkey fig in a pot. It's gotten a pretty good sized trunk, which will allow it to now put energy to all these different scions that I have grafted onto this. Now you also, a very important thing is to draw yourself a little map or a notebook that has which scions are where on this tree, because inevitably you're going to lose where some of them are. And like the really important ones, like I've got some black Madeiras on here. I know I do, but the, some of these labels are gone. So I have a feeling that some of these are those, those figs there. And a lot of these that don't have the labels on them are the really, really good ones. So I need to go back and look at my paperwork because I know there's a black pearl on here for sure. And I know there is a, a black Madeira and I did at least find that that atlas fig. So there are 25 different varieties on this thing, and that's what it will end up with even if all of these don't take. Like I said, I'm gonna be adding on varieties till we get to at least 25, that's a good number. This particular client wants more like 50, so it's gonna be several years before this tree is actually ready. This just so happens to be a commissioned piece. Man, look at all those graphs, that's wild. <clears throat> Think it looks pretty neat so yeah guys recap if you ever want to do something like this it's actually pretty simple to do <clears throat> you'd want to do it in the winter time when it is a lot cooler in order to do this and for things to obviously take and grow i mean these have already some of these have already really shot off so we definitely have some winners winners on this tree i just need to know what all the the ones missing their tags are now we need to go back and identify those so, all right, guys, kind of a longer video there. Sorry for that being a longer video, but uh, I really enjoy doing these type of projects and something like this takes quite a while. So 
I don't, I'm not on uh, YouTube a lot with a lot of videos because I'm actually working, guys. I'm trying to get a lot of this done. And if you see what's coming in the next couple of years here, as far as what we've got in production, we've got a lot of stuff in production that is ready to go. Like this year, well over four or 500 figs alone, fig trees. So we've really gotten to propagating a lot of these plants. So a lot of you can have uh, things that are adjusted to Arizona and a lot of stuff that's grown here in Arizona because you want to buy local, not only to help the local economy but because the plants are just better quality they've been grown here so they are adapted to the desert environment that they are grown into oh and there's a cadot on here somewhere too so yeah there's there's some stuff missing but anyway all right guys that is it for today thank you for watching